Hey guys, so I've been editing this Q&A for so long. I know it might not make sense coming after the video I just posted like a few days ago um, where I said I was like burnt out and stuff. But yeah, I, I filmed this video a very long time ago and I just decided to finish it up so I could clear it out and check it off the list. Um, and yeah, I actually am feeling better than when I made the video a few days ago. I'm feeling a little bit more energized, but I still know I need to take a break. Like even though I feel kind of good now, um, I could still easily just get, just start feeling so down and crappy again. Probably gonna take a little bit longer break. Um, I'm gonna take a break from Instagram probably pretty soon here. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this Q&A. I'm sorry it took so long. Um, I answered as many questions as I could without the video being too long. So let's get into it. <laughs> Hey guys, so today I am painting for you and finally doing that Q&A that I promised. In one of my past vlogs, I said, ask questions for the Q&A under this comment, and I'm going to try to mainly do those. I don't know if I'll be able to get to all of them. And if they don't all get answered in this video, um, I'll probably be doing more Q&A videos. I know I'm going to do one that's a Q&A about me, like a get to know me type video. Don't know when that's going to be, but I have some ideas for that video. I have ideas for a lot of videos, I just don't have time for a lot of videos, so that's the issue. But I guess without talking too much, I'm just going to go ahead and get into the video. If you are new to my channel, I'm Darcy and I am a sophomore in college and I'm a fine art major. Don't know what else to say. So let's get into it. I'm going to be painting as well. I'm working on some shirt commissions because I did a Van Gogh painting on clothes video. I offered shirts from that and shoes, so I'm working on a shirt right now. Um, so that is more than you need to know. Question one is from Katia Alphonse, and she asks, hey, any advice for an art major trying to start a YouTube channel? Time management, planning, etc." So I can definitely answer this question. I think my number one advice would just have to be uh, go for it. You don't have to wait. You can start right now. I started out just filming on my phone. Right now I have a camera, fortunately, that I've been able to film on and it has better quality, but I started out with just my iPhone. Also, don't be like timid to start filming around campus. Um, if anything, it'll get you more exposure for your YouTube channel. If somebody asks you like, why are you filming everything? Don't, don't be embarrassed. Let people look at you weirdly. Um, it's totally fine. And we live in a day and age now where honestly that's pretty normal. So really go for it. Um, time management, man, like that's the big thing. I don't even know if I can give you advice on this. Somehow I've been able to manage everything, but at the same time I've kind of just like at times sacrificed my own mental health, uh, physical health. It keeps me really busy. For me, I'm an art major, so I have homework. I have a YouTube channel, so that takes time editing, responding to people, planning videos, shooting videos. I have an Instagram, so I have to keep up with that. Just time management is always such a big thing and so important for my life. Um, with my YouTube channel, I mean, you just kind of have to find time. Just find it somewhere. I think if you really want to do something, you will be able to find the time for it. Just don't go too hard on yourself. If you need a break, it's okay, even if you feel like you have so much left to do. Just take a break because your health is very important. You do have to work hard, so definitely expect that. Lots of hours editing. Editing kind of takes over my life whenever I do it. Um, so just be aware of that. Next question is from Forever Periwinkle. And you say, what dream art job are you pursuing or want after college? So basically what I'm doing now, and I kind of mentioned this before, like I'm trying to be a self-made businesswoman. I'm trying to live off of my own art. I want to continue doing YouTube, being an influencer on YouTube and Instagram, work with companies. I guess I don't have a super clear picture, but I know that I want to go this route of um, making my living on my own art. Camilla says, hello, I'm wondering if I were op if I were to open a store for selling my stuff. Do you have any tips and tricks? How do you deal with shipment, packaging, and pricing? Guys, pricing is the worst thing ever. I hate pricing. If you have a price that you think is good, and you tell it to somebody, they're gonna give you like this dirty look, like why are you charging me that much? Also, it's really easy to charge less than your art is worth. 
surprising totally sucks but the more you do it the more you get a hang of it i'd say ask other people for advice you know other artists see what works for them currently my pricing goes by size and i also do consider the time it takes but i don't ever time myself so i usually never know how exactly how long it took me but for example if i'm pricing a 9 by 12 acrylic painting i multiply 9 by 12 and that is 108 i think yeah 108 then i can adjust that based on how long it took me or like how detailed it is and go a little down or a little up that's kind of how i'm doing it now but i still mess up with pricing a lot and again it's kind of just something you're gonna have to learn to get good at for packaging and shipping i have made mistakes with that for sure you definitely don't want to undercharge and then it ends up being a lot more to ship than you originally thought. I would suggest if it's something that you're really not sure about, like a big painting, like if it's a little picture or a mini canvas, like I sell mini paintings, then sometimes you can just estimate the shipping cost. But if you're selling uh, something heavy, like a big canvas, I would definitely go to the post office and get a quote before you tell them the price. And um, packaging and stuff. There's tutorials on YouTube and I believe eHow actually is where I found one but I'll try I'll try to leave a link below for a good tutorial on packaging this is for paintings you basically want to get paper that's specifically for wrapping the painting I think it's like water resistant paper then also bubble wrap and then like maybe put it in a few more layers of bubble wrap like just layer that painting up and then hopefully it'll be protected when you ship it for shipping drawings on paper I usually put them in an envelope and then I put in like a piece of cardboard or something so that it stays straight and then I write do not bend on the envelope um, something simple like that this one is from the absolute fantastic when did you start being serious about art and how long have you been doing art I actually started being serious like thinking I can do it as a career in high school when I started my Instagram page I realized this is actually like a thing I could actually make a living off of my art but I've been doing art for my whole life pretty much what's your favorite medium and why is also something you ask um it's kind of hard because I've been branching out to more mediums now I, I really like paint like acrylic paint oil paint I really like pen I like Copic markers I like watercolor but I think the one that I use the most um, and the one that is my favorite because it's easy to use, it's portable, color pencil. I, I've always loved color pencils. Like that's what got me started into coloring my pictures. Um, and I think that's also kind of a side effect of being on Instagram because everybody on Instagram uses used color pencil whenever I first got on. So yeah, those are really great. Eve asks, do you prefer to do more realistic, impressionistic, or abstract work and why? I just realized that I really have not been doing any painting. It's hard to like focus on the question and also focus on the painting. Okay, so I usually do prefer more impressionistic. I think realistic is fun and it's cool to challenge myself in that way. And that is usually the one you get the most compliments on. Like if you can do a picture super realistically, then people are like, oh wow, you're so talented. Um, But I think impressionistic is the most fun and it's the one I can put the most the most emotion into, the most color. I love adding mini colors to a painting or something. Colors that may not be there or may already be there, but I slightly exaggerate them. It's something you can really play around with, basically. You don't have to stick to what's on the page. The next question is from Ali Love. How do you find time to work your own personal art projects into your time? I've been struggling with that since school started up. I find myself only doing the art assigned and none for myself. This is literally something I have been thinking about for the past week and made actually a post about it on Instagram. I don't have time to do the work that I want to do. I have so many ideas like written on my phone. Every time I have a really good idea, I'm like, oh, that'd be a really cool art project. I write it down on my phone because I don't have time to do it. So really, I don't think I can answer that question because I haven't really found the time. My plan right now is to finish up these commissions that I have, which are a lot, and they will take a while. Um, and then after that, I'm just going to take a break from commissions for a while. Maybe I'll still do the shirts. I'm not sure. 
um, but I want to work on my own stuff for a little bit because I really, really would like to explore that. I have lots of good ideas that I just want to see them happen. Um, so yeah, I guess my advice to you would be to try to prioritize if this is something you really want to do. See what you can take out of your life, um, at least for a little bit, and work on your own personal projects because they are important. Um, it's it's important to find yourself as an artist and to get your message out there. Next question is from Lily Flower. What are your favorite mediums to combine in a piece? I think some mediums that go really well together in a piece are Copic marker first and then going over it with colored pencil or watercolor first and going over, over it with Copic marker and then possibly going over it with colored pencil. Um, also pen goes really well. Like I use a white gel pen a lot and um, if I'm using color pencil and I need to add some highlights, then I'll use a white gel pen. Panda Art asks, how was it like when you moved in your dorm for the first time and how was your first art college class like? Well, you can actually find that out for yourself. Go to my first art college vlog um, and you will see what it was like. So someone, literally their name is someone, asks, where do you get inspiration from? I get inspiration from just about anything. A lot of times I get it from music because music is very important to me. When I'm listening to the song and maybe I'm hit by the feels or something, that's inspiration. Sometimes I'm just going through a hard time or a confusing time in my life and that gives me inspiration. If I really want to draw and I literally have no idea what to draw, sometimes I just go through my saved images on Instagram. That's such a good feature. I'm glad Instagram started that. So um, also Pinterest, you know, that's a good place to go if you need ideas. Oh, and I also get ideas from other artists and people that I see on Instagram doing stuff. So that leads into the next question, favorite Instagram artists. I really like um, another question from someone is, do you have any other hobbies besides art? Yes, I love music. Music is one of my top passions for sure. Art and music are like right up there, right next to each other. Singing, playing the piano. I also play clarinet in band. I also enjoy playing volleyball. Next question is, what's the most difficult thing for you to draw? Um, I'm just going to narrow this down to what's the most difficult thing for me to draw on people and that would have to be feet probably. It used to be hands like most people but I enjoy hands now and I actually have gotten the hang of it for the most part but feet still confuse me. Next one is from Nina Enters the World. How do you stay motivated to do art? I know when you have it for homework it's easier but like over the summer and stuff. I mean honestly when I have it for homework like it's just something I have to do. Yeah, I guess you could say that that's motivating me. Um, but over the summer, like that's when I feel like I can get the best art because it's my own art. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't usually have time to do my own art. Sometimes I do go through art block. Um, and that usually happens whenever I've been doing art for a very long period of time and then I just kind of get tired of it and I have no motivation. I still do art in that time just because I can't help myself. Like I have to draw, um, <laughs> but I don't like feel motivated to do anything that I really, really care about. <clears throat> but sometimes I just have to start putting the pencil to the paper and then sometimes I'll, most often, I'll get inspiration from there. So you really just kind of have to start. Um, if you need ideas, again, you can go to Instagram or Pinterest. Champion61, can you give advice on selling art for a beginner? New aspiring starving artist asking. Well, don't look at yourself as a starving artist. That is no way to go about this. I know you're just joking, but really don't look at yourself that way. Well, definitely ask for advice. So you've started out doing the right thing. I would also say look around um, on multiple websites and from multiple people for advice. People that you know personally, like if you know an artist personally, I would definitely ask them what they would suggest um, to you. First of all, I would definitely say start an Instagram account or a Facebook account or better yet, both. I personally like Instagram better. I know how to use it more. I can reach more people that way, but I know there's a lot of people that swear by Facebook, so go for that if you want to make a Facebook account. I do have a Facebook. I just don't really have that much success on there. When it comes to pricing, again, like I said before, it's kind of different for everybody and you kind of have to learn from experience, really take into consideration the time you spent on your art, the size of your art, the cost of materials, and also the experience that you have. You know, that's some that's 
definitely something you should take into consideration because for me I basically spent my whole life on working up to the skill level that I'm at now like I, I will take that into consideration whenever you have a commission for somebody ask lots of questions at first make sure you're on track like you guys have the same idea in mind before you even start on your piece make sure you have them pay like half or a certain amount up front before you start working on it I learned that the hard way so also for selling art you should definitely consider the fact that that means you're going to be a business and depending on how much you sell how much you make you will have to do taxes on that so you need to keep up with how much you're selling and also how much you're how much you're spending on things for this business so for example um, if you go to Michael's to buy art supplies for a uh, commission for somebody or even just to buy art supplies in general you have to think about the gas mileage and also the cost of the products and then you can um, you know get money off of your taxes I don't remember what the technical word is but you can get money off of your taxes based on those personal expenses. Keep all your receipts also. Um, that's, yeah, keep all your receipts that you spend on um, art supplies or things related to that. I definitely suggest getting advice from somebody else on that. I'm not an expert on that whatsoever. All right, so I hope that video wasn't too long and boring for you guys. I feel like I'm gonna hate myself during the editing process because I'm gonna be looking through all this and be like, Darcy, this is not good. People are gonna be bored to tears. <laughs> I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was really helpful. I'm going to end the video right here. I'm sorry that I didn't get very far on this painting. It's very difficult to try to think of things and talk to a camera while I'm painting. So, yeah. Bye, guys.